Welcome, my friends. You're listening to the voice of the Eternal Gospel, a program brought to you by the Eternal Gospel Ministry, founded in 1992 by Seventh day Adventist believers. This is a Christian program dedicated to bring you the prophetic fulfillment, warning, and revelations of the end times, and to promote the advancement of Christ in your life. Welcome, my friends, again to the voice of the eternal gospel. I'm Pastor Rafael Perez, and I'm inviting you to pray with us. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, thank you again for giving us this great opportunity to study the event, these prophecies that are about to take place on this earth. Help us, O oh Lord, that as we see the time, the time of the end, coming upon us, that we can make it, make ourselves ready to receive you in the clouds of heaven. Help us and help our people to get ready also for the greatest event ever that's going to take place among us, the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is on his name that we ask you for these blessings. Amen. Amen. You, you asked the question. Yes, I asked a question in the previous program. Yes. And you was asking us, you said you're going to challenge us on the issue of uh, bringing out more biblical precedent on this matter. Right. Uh, first of all, I want to say that the book of Daniel mm -hmm. is the book that's showing the history of nations. And the book of Revelation is going to deal more with ecclesiastical entities. Mm -hmm. If you look at the dominant factors... And when they put the two together, you find that the study of damn relation is the complete breakdown of the or scenario of a union of church and state set up by men yeah. over a period of history. Yeah, all this uh -huh. uh, so for our viewers to know, just in case they miss the program, uh, previous program, all this we're bringing is approving with fact and prophecy based on Revelation 14, 9 through 11, that it talks about that in the, this end time, there'll be an image to be formed, yes. image of a political and religious power uh, that we understand is the papacy. I want to take you to Daniel chapter 1 for a moment, mm -hmm. and I want you to look at a name with me because I want to show you anciently what that name represented. That's first okay. of all. Okay. In Daniel chapter 1, the Bible says, In the third year reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judea, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. Mm -hmm. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judea, into his hands with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar and brought them into the treasure house of his God. Mm -hmm. Now let's stop there in Daniel chapter 1, verse 1. The Bible says one other thing, though, Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar's name is, is very important to us when we study the background. Nebuchadnezzar's name meant Nabu protects. But Nebuchadnezzar was king of Babylon. As king, he was head of church of, of <laughs> politics, mm -hmm. and he was also head of religion. Mm -hmm. All right? This mm -hmm. he was also he was the head of what was known as the Babylonian mystery religions. Mm -hmm. the, the mysteries of occult worship, which is the worship of idols and the worship of of, of, of calling on with even with spirits, all right? Uh, 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 among those idols now, was if, the word sun worship. Right. If you don't believe that, then look at what verse 2 says in Daniel 2, mm -hmm. looking at Daniel 2, verses 1 and 2. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, In the second year reign of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, mm -hmm. Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams, wherewith his mm -hmm. spirit was troubled and his sleep break from him. Mm -hmm. Then the king commanded to call in the magicians, and who? The, the astrologers. astrologers. And the what? Sorcerers. 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 And the Chaldeans, mm -hmm. for to show the king his dream. Mm -hmm. So they came and stood before the king. Mm -hmm. Now notice here he called the magicians, the astrologers, mm -hmm. the sorcerers, and the Chaldeans. Mm -hmm. These are all representing religion and philosophies. Mm -hmm. uh, philosophers. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, Nebuchadnezzar is king, and therefore he, they're also representing his, 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 he has a combined union of religion and politics in his kingdom. He's known as Pontifex Maximus. Mm -hmm. He's head of religion and head of state. Mm -hmm. All right? This is, the, this, 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 is, this is clear throughout the history of when you study the history of Babylon. And it's also seen also in, in some areas of when you study the history of Egypt. 
Right. But this is what this name is, Pontifex Maximus, mm -hmm. all right? And at the same time, head of what? Religion and head of state. Now, when we go to Daniel chapter 3, yeah. um, let's look at that one together because now we're going to talk about an image being made mm -hmm. in Daniel chapter 3. In Daniel chapter 3, looking at verse 1, the Bible says, Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold mm -hmm. whose height was 300 cubits and the breadth six cubits. Now notice very carefully, what did the king make? Three square cubits. Uh, three square cubits. What, what did he make? An, an image of an gold. An image of gold. gold. Okay, so here's a for here's an issue of a king who's head of state and head of religion mm -hmm. form, forming and making an image of gold. What is verse 2? What does verse 2 say? Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent to gather together the princes, the governors, the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Notice they were gathered together to do what? Come to the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar set up. Now who set it up? The king. By what authority? His political authority, and by what other authority? His religious authority. Mm -hmm. right. Now, is religious got anything? Remember, the dedication sounds political. Right. But let's see. Is there a religious element in this issue? Yes. Oh, yes. Read verse 3. Then the princes, the governors, and captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together to the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up, and they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then a herald cried aloud, to you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages. Okay, stop right there a minute. A herald cried out. Now, a herald, if we want to bring it today, a herald will be like a newscaster, yeah. a news reporter. It could be CNN, special could be Fox News, special announcements, <laughs> coming across the radio. MSNBC. Across the, yeah, yeah, MSNBC, MSNBC. All saying what now? To you, O people, what? And nations and languages. You know, that's a lot like the first angel's message. Yes. Uh -huh. It's a herald being cried. And, and the second he... or third angel message. Okay, but what did the herald say? What did it say now? Let's see if it's a religious element in this. That at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. Wait a minute. Fall down and do what? Worship. 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 Now, wait a minute. We read earlier the where Israel had committed an abomination by worshiping the sun towards the east. Mm -hmm. Here, the image is made of gold. Mm -hmm. Now, most people may not relate, but gold is also a symbol of sun worship mm -hmm. in the Old Testament history mm -hmm. and in the teachings of pagan customs. There were three areas of worship that represented gold. The worship of the sun, mm -hmm. fire, and gold. So over here, the king was making it uh, like a law. Yes, he making an enforcement. a law. Enforcement. Enforcement. And right. what happened? What did he say? You, 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 you said he made a law. What did he say that, he would, uh, that would make you know that if you didn't worship, you had consequences? Well, read it, please, Brother and Patrick. He, he Next continues verse. and says, Whosoever falls not down and worship shall be shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, all the music, they, it says, uh, all the, the nations and the languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar, the king, had set up. Did, did, did you notice what is the word that is repeated time after time in those verses that you just read? Fall down and worship. Worship. What is the word that is repeated under the third angel message too? Yeah, worship. Worship. Be worship. careful to worship the beast. Be careful not to worship the image. Be careful not to worship the mark of the beast. But, but where does this go? Where does this all this go back to? I mean, you, it, I'm sorry, you, no. You, does history up. repeat? Okay, let's just see. Where does all this go back to? Even people watching us. Where does this go back to? Why are we talking about worship? Why are we talking about not worshiping an image? Where is this coming from? Is it just us making this up? No. Or, you know, because we're Seventh-day Adventists, and they say, well, you know, you're Adventists, you people, you, you make all this stuff up. Excuse me, what, where is this coming from? Isn't this going back to God's covenant? What is God's covenant? What is the covenant? Deuteronomy 4, verse and 12. In Deuteronomy 4, 13, 13, it says, And he declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded to perform even ten commandments, and he wrote them on two 
tables of stone. Mm -hmm. Now let me ask you a question. If he gave us 10 commandments, what does the 10 commandments say? Not what the Pope's commandments say. I wanna know what the Bible's 10 commandments say. Yes. The Bible says over in Exodus chapter 20, it says, and God spake all these words saying, I am the Lord thy God, which I brought thee out the land of Egypt and out the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make any graven image of any likeness of anything that's in heaven above or that's in the earth beneath or that's in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Amen. Now, wait a minute. God's word, God's law condemns the worship of idols and images. Yes. Even likenesses of him, he said, you should not make any likeness of anything that's in heaven above. What was in heaven above? It was the sun, the moon, and the stars. He told them not to worship these heavenly bodies. In the Bible, the Bible, the Bible constantly is showing us that. You had something you want to say, Patrick, on that? Um, this was the second commandment. Yes. And the Hebrews then were, if they had fallen down during this time of Nebuchadnezzar, they would have been violating this second commandment. And how many Hebrews were in Babylon at that time? There were thousands. There were thousands. And out of the thousands of Hebrews that were there and yeah. the thousands of their children that was there, yeah. only three men would stand up against King Nebuchadnezzar's decree and did not fear death, they feared God more than life and death. Hmm. Could that mean that if history repeats as Ecclesiastes 1.9 and 3.15 says... What is 1.9? Ecclesiastes yeah. uh, 3.15. Let's yeah. go there. Yeah, you can recite it. Uh, yeah, Ecclesiastes 1.9. Go, yeah. go ahead, Patrick. Yeah, go ahead. Um, okay, read that one first because... Okay. All right. Then I want to read Revelation 13. Okay, 1-9 says, so The thing that has been yeah. is, not, is that which shall be, mm -hmm. and that which is done is that which shall be done. Uh -huh. And there is no new thing under the sun. Okay? And Ecclesiastes 3.15 says here, That which has been is now, and that which is to be has already been, and God requires that which is past. Mm -hmm. And now Revelation 13.15 says, and he had power to give life to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image oh, of worship. the beast should be killed. So, so the, 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 the worshiping always come time after time. It's like a two forces. If, if God's, my love is just, you know, I, I want to create an image of, I created you as a, a my own image. You are to worship me. Satan said, no, 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 no. I'm going to, create a counterfeit image so you can worship me instead of God. But let's hold it right there. We'll be right back. Paul and Jesus both predict that the Church of God becomes a force against God. The radical faith that Jesus taught had become the official religion of the empire that murdered him. The speed with which the early church tobogganed into apostasy will take your breath away. Welcome back, my friends. Brother Patrick, yes. I'm sorry, I cut you off a little well, fast. I'll read it again in verse 15 of Revelation 13. Right. It talks about the United States, mm -hmm. uh, apostate Protestantism, mm -hmm. having power to give life to the image of the beast that had, uh, to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. This is exactly what happened in Daniel 3. Mm -hmm. where you had a, an image built, a decree to worship the image, and if you didn't, 
you would be thrown into the burning fiery furnace. And, and remember, the fiery furnace and the gold was a, was a dedication that the king had made to the sun. Mm -hmm. That's the whole idea. In fact, if you go to Daniel, when you get in Daniel chapter 4, and you read about Nebuchadnezzar's grandson's name, whose name was Belshazzar, Belshazzar. Mm -hmm. Belshazzar's name meant evil Marduk, meaning the sun god protects the king. Wow. So they were into, this was, they were really into sun worship in the Babylonian system. Now, that's probably, uh -huh. I'm sorry, you want to say something? That's probably the uh, doctrine that united all these peoples because mm -hmm. uh, this gathering was from all, all of his uh, dominions around the world coming together to this place to worship this oh. new image. It was an ecumenical gathering. This was a global projection. It yeah. was an ecu I, I like that. Mm -hmm. An ecumenical gathering. Yeah. Again, going by what, what you, you were reading in mm -hmm. Ecclesiastes, mm -hmm. it's History proving that the Word of God repeated. is repeating. Don't we hear today for the good of humanity? We hear for the th good of the uh, environment and families coming together. What will be the common uh, belief, one of the most common beliefs that we can find among Catholics, Protestants, and many other religions, even pagan religions? There are, there are Isn't that the worship of, of the sun god the, through the, the Sunday? The common good will be in three areas. Mm. Number one, marriage. Mm. Because the marriage fam, the fam marriage has yeah. been destroyed or perverted since 2015. All right? all right. Then you have the issue of Sunday, and then you have the issue of the public schools with the shootings and everything. God being taken out of public schools through Madeline O'Hara back in the 60s, mm -hmm. and the, and the, and, the, and the Supreme Court ruling that prayer was no longer legal in schools, mm -hmm. and that it violated the principles of church and state. Mm -hmm. Separation of church and state at that time. That's what they claim. Mm -hmm. And so this is what you see. And you're going to see, and we're seeing these connecting links, be each one being used. For instance, when they had the school shooting a few months back, they said that uh, one, 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 uh, one, one leader of the advisory board said that the reason why this has happened because we have a separation of church and state. Mm -hmm. Really? Wow. That's what I, I have the article too to go with it. Right. But I just want you to see. But we we're, we're 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 in those we're in that process. But let's go back to Daniel. In chapter three, mm -hmm. did Nebuchadnezzar also have the death decree as he just brought out from Revelation uh, thirteen? 13. Mm -hmm. Look what it says in verse uh, six. But you see, the devil is very smart. He's not going to bring a death decree immediately. No. When a national Sunday law will be established. Right, but. So, you know, be I aware of that. Uh -huh. it, it's gonna be through good, it's gonna be through quote unquote good motive for, uh, for, uh, for the good of the family, but, right. the good of the environment, the good of the of this educational system. But so one on. thing I noticed very carefully in, in Nebuchadnezzar's issue, he used the music industry right. to <laughs> right. be part of that issue. Yeah. Music industries and entertainers, okay? Yeah. Right, right. I'm quite sure he had different politicians going too, but... Because you can move people. Yes, very, you can rest yeah. with the music. Because yeah. right. notice what he says. And music unite people too. That's right. Notice it says, yeah, Thou, O King, has made... What, what it, what it says, Whoso falleth not down shall worship and worshipeth, that he should be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. But then he says in verse 7, it says, Therefore, at the time when, thou, when all the people heard the sound of the coronet, the flute, the harp, the subbuck, the yeah. pousery, and all kinds of music, all the people, the nations, the languages, fell down. This is, all, this is global. Yeah. All right? Yeah. It's not a local issue, like you said. It says, fell down and worshiped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar, the king, had set up. Isn't that what Revelation 14 says? Yes. Can you read it again, please? Revelation 14. Verse 6 says. Well, no, no, no. no. Verse 9. No, that was the first one. Verse 9. Yeah. 9 11. But I'm saying the, mm -hmm. the oh. third follows the second. The second yes. follows oh. the first. Yes. Okay. And the yes. first is going to every nation, kindred, kindred tongue, tongue, and people. people. Yes, Well, well the, the, the reason why God has to send the first angel message to every nation's kindred and tongues is because to... to 
give to prepare the people not to receive the mark of the beast, right. not to worship the image, right. yes, not and, to worship the beast. And this issue has to do with sin and righteousness. Okay. And the beast and the image is trying to make people sin against one of God's Ten Commandments, one of the first four Ten Commandments dealing with worship. Mm -hmm. And we see here in Daniel 3, the, ma the commandment emphasized there was the second commandment. Yes. But here in the end, it will be, it will be a spiritual image set up, and the fourth commandment will be now, the... Do but you no, think, but, but yeah, go ahead. Do you think it is a coincidence that it is a Babylon mentioned on Daniel 3, Aha. and there is a Babylon mentioned in Revelation 14? Yeah. No. Is, is that a coincidence? No, because you have... Oh, the, God is trying no. to speak to us. Huh? Is, yes. that a, is that a coincidence? Babylon Daniel 3 and Babylon and... Yes. It, it's, that's not a coincidence. No, it's not God a coincidence. God tried to speak oh, no. into us for this end time. Yeah. God is trying to get us to see that yeah. ancient Babylon, spiritual Babylon, is going to repeat the same thing as ancient Babylon did. No, you got Okay, it. now, at the same time, remember this. And now, is that the only place in the book of, in the Bible that talks about issues of church and state? Mm -hmm. Since you asked that question, because some people might say, oh, they look in the book of Daniel, but that's... Go with me to First Kings. Okay, First Kings. Go with me to Kings. First Kings, and I want you to look at verse. I want to show you a union of church and state yeah. through marriage. Yeah. Do, do, uh, okay. Uh, uh -huh. Before we go there, uh, just to make my case, in Revelation fourteen, uh, 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 yeah. nine. Yes. Uh, uh, we saw over there uh, when when the king made the image, he was giving wine to the, his invitees. His people, mm -hmm. Revelation fourteen ten, they say over here there is a wine too. So the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. See, so you see, there is a wine. In that, verse eight, Babylon has yeah, the wine there. The wine, yeah. She made all nations drink, drink of, of the, the wine, wine of the wrath, wrath of her, her fornication. fornication. The same thing that happened back then is happening over here. And what God is saying is, if you drink of the wine of this new Babylon. Forget about this old, the historical Babylon. But right. this new spiritual or mystical, whatever you want to call it, Babylon, yeah. you are going to receive a wine, but it's going to be the wine of my wrath. God, because it's the greatest abomination. Yes. To worship mm -hmm. the sun, to worship at the image. And the sad thing is, most people don't have a clue of what the new Babylon is, of what the image is, until, of course, by God's grace, we hope and pray through radio programs, through TV programs like this, through newspaper that we print all the times, you know, around the country, like a USA Today, Washington Times. We, we got those papers around here, okay? We, we, we are giving the people enough information for them to look at it. For, for you to read in your Bible. Don't go, don't, don't, don't go to your ministers. And ministers, don't go to your churches. Because that's a problem. You know, when we are uh, serving as a minister in those churches, we go to our, what they call, upliner. You know, superior, so to speak. Mm -hmm. No, no. Go to the superior of the superiors, which is God. Yeah. That's where you have to go. Okay? So we, we, we publish those things openly. You know, that's, openly. that's an important point because the third angel's message yeah. begins with these words. It says, if any man right. worship the beast. Right. So it's going or to... Or the every, image. Uh, or the image. So right. the, this message is going to people, right. individuals. Individuals Amen. have to make a decision. Amen. It's not, okay, I'll wait for my church to do something. And no, God is t giving individuals, yeah. you, the warning not to worship the beast in the image, so you have to make a decision all by yourself Amen. like God's people did in Bible history. Like the, the, the three Hebrew yeah. made yeah. On, on the old Babylon. Yeah. They as individuals have to make the decision. Like Martin Luther did in posting those 95 theses all by himself. Amen. It, it hurts my, it pains my heart when I... I speak constantly with, you know, priests and ministers. Say, well, no, I need to go with what my church says. No, no, no. Don't go by what your church says. Go by what God says. 
In fact, That's what you have to go. In fact, let's go back to the scripture injunction. In 2 Timothy 2.15, the Bible says, Study to show thyself approved unto God. Amen, amen. A workman if not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Mm. John 5.39, Jesus said what? Search the scriptures. Mm -hmm. For in them you think you have eternal life, mm -hmm. and they are they which testify of me. Mm -hmm. Then the Bible tells you again that while we're doing that, the Bible says where we begin the, what, how did Jesus begin? The Bible says in Luke 24, 27, and beginning with, it says, the beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all scripture the things concerning himself. Mm -hmm. So we're going to find that the scriptures are what is supposed to be the superior of the superiors yeah. that we're supposed to go to. The ministers are not to consult with their friends first or with their high, they're supposed to consult the word of God because mm -hmm. every minister is supposed to be called by God mm -hmm. and he's and he's subjecting himself to God's word and the God's law, his Ten Commandments. And I understand about the salary issue, because, you know, some of them have been saying, I got family to support. If I break up, you know, from my church, well, you know, uh, well, uh, Jim, and, and I got friends and I got, you know, this. When you deal with support of family, then think about this one. Jeremiah was called by God and he told him that he could not get married. Hmm. Because it would, it, it, because of the, because of the impending tr conflict that was going to come on Jerusalem, yeah. and the work that he called him to do as a prophet. Right. Maybe another time we can bring I, one of my favorite prophets is Jeremiah. By today, we, I need to close. Unfortunately, our time flies over here in this microphone. Uh, I just want to remind you, I, I'm excited because while I see all these events, prophecy being fulfilled. I, I know that my, our Lord and Savior is coming very soon to bring a church, to bring a people that instead of being worshiping the image of the beast, the beast or, or, or the bark of the beast, they're going to just follow the Lamb, Jesus Christ. He is the one that we must follow. He is the one that is going to come for each one of us. God bless you all. Our Voice of the Eternal Gospel family thanks you for joining us. Generous contributors like you keep us broadcasting. Prayerfully consider supporting this ministry. Donations are tax deductible and can be sent to Voice of the Eternal Gospel, P.O. Box 15138, West Palm Beach, Florida, 33416. Our phone number is 1-866-7th-DAY-2. That's 1-866-784-3292. And our web address is voiceoftheeternalgospel.com. Find out what the critics are raving about. Top scholars and theologians from around the country come together to reveal the hidden history of the Book of Revelation. With powerful reenactments and incredible visual effects, this 95-minute masterpiece brings to life the Book of Revelation like never before. Revelation is no longer a mystery. Get your copy today.